Hello, I am Benjamin Anfield Johnston and this is my lockdown vlog edition number four. So, first things first, the Premier League returned to our screens last night. Finally, after those hundred days of no Premier League football. And uh, yeah, very, very uh, interesting games really. I was convinced that Sheffield United would go to Villa Park and win. Uh, <laughs> they should have. <laughs> That was a goal. Oh, my word. That was like, I honestly, truly believe you could have been stood at the boring shopping centre in Birmingham and seen that that was a goal. It was just unbelievable. But, yeah, uh, to be fair, apart from that, Aston Villa were quite, were actually better than I thought they were going to be, to be honest. Uh, the change of goalkeeper, I thought, would have came back to bite them. I mean... Pepe Reina is not the Pepe Reina that was once at Liverpool, but Nyland, I don't know what it is about him. I just, I just don't trust him. Uh, I just, I think there's just certain goalkeepers who are at a certain level, and for me, he is not a Premiership goalkeeper. But listen, who am I to say? Uh, but no, it was, it was bizarre to watch for a little bit. I actually watched it with the crowd noise. Definitely the best decision that was ever made. Of, and then I kind of watched it without the crowd noise. It's not the same. It feels a bit weird. Kind of, it's a bit like watching the German games. And I know, like, watching German football can sometimes be a bit like, why am I doing this? But especially during these times that we're in now, it felt like that even more so. But no, the crowd noise with the games last night I thought worked really really well uh, but no fair play to Aston Villa getting a point of uh, in normal circumstances you know that would have been regarded as a great point for them so we'll see how much that benefits but no that was definitely a goal in a million years I mean oh my word uh, you know, if Sheffield United miss out on Champions League football because of that come the end of the season they always seem to get robbed in the Premier League if it's not a player who shouldn't be playing who gets them relegated over 10 years ago to a goal that should have stood that didn't alert the referee that it was a goal. It's just, you couldn't make it up. Uh, but no, uh, it was just glad to see football back. Uh, really good with what Villa did with the banners. I think it really works. But I think in general, my takeaway from that last night was I do think Aston Villa will go down. I, I do, I, I just don't think they've got enough. I don't think they've got enough in the tank. I don't think they've got a good enough squad, really. I think it's basically Grealish and begin or bust. And I don't really see it changing with their 10 games left. And they've got some tough games to come. They've got to go to Anfield. They've got to, their last game of the season against West Ham, which could be a cup final in itself. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, with regards to Sheffield United... Listen, they've had a great season and I don't think they'll get Champions League football. I think they'll definitely, they've got a, a definite chance of finishing those European places. So we'll just have to see on that one. Uh, but no, overall that was quite an alright, it was a it was a better nil-nil than I thought it could have been. You know, you watch some games that are nil-nil and you're like, oh my word. But no, it wasn't that bad actually. Uh, Given them the credit, I did think it was going to be a bit stale and it, it wasn't. So respect to both. A group of players so yeah and then obviously we fast forward to the Man City game and uh, yeah I didn't expect Arsenal going to go there and win and then when I found out that they only left London at five o'clock <laughs> yeah I, I don't really understand that one uh, but yeah they obviously got beat 3-0 uh, congratulations to Raheem Sterling for scoring the first goal of the Premier League restart and what a finish it was and yeah then uh, yeah Aston just kind of fell apart then David Louise came on and did David Louise things and uh, yeah what will be will be with David Louise he just he doesn't help himself does he he really doesn't help himself he seems to have always had these defensive frailties in him if it's not when he was at Chelsea, then he when he was at PSG, when Luis Suarez humiliated him in the Champions League, and then going back to Chelsea, which I thought was a good sign at the time, and then he just kind of seemed to fall off a cliff, David Luiz, and then going to Arsenal, which I thought was a bit weird anyways, 
But yeah, I think he's... There's two things about David Luiz. I do truly believe he is a good player, but not in that position, unless he's in a country what can deal with that. When he was in Portugal, I can imagine he was dealing very well when he was playing for Benfica. I could probably say he could probably even risk playing that way he does for Brazil, kind of. But in the Premier League, it's just... He's always kind of been... He's never been regarded as a, 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 a great. And, well, if it hasn't happened now, it's not going to happen in the future. But we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, it would be very Arsenal to give him an extension. It would be very Arsenal. Uh, but we'll just have to see on that one. But no, first two games back. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did expect Man City to win last night. They did. Did I expect Arsenal to... Did I expect anything else apart from what Arsenal gave me? Probably not. I think we're just realising that Arsenal are a very, very poor squad and need a lot of rebuilding. And for them, it seems to be Aubameyang or Bust. If he leaves, they're in trouble. If he leaves, they are in trouble because they're not going to get Champions League football. They're going to be in the Europa League again next season. So, yeah, they're just... Yeah, they're in a bit of a pickle, Arsenal. have. Uh, it would be very, very interesting to see what happens if they start next season badly. Because for years it was okay to throw, throw it all at Wenger's doorstep. Then they started to throw at Unai Emery, who I always thought was a terrible signing. I mean, all the, the managers they could have went for, and they went for him. Just it, it just never made sense for me. It just really, really didn't. I don't think he's a great manager. I think when he was at PSG... It covered over the cracks, winning, you know, French leagues and that. Well, they always capitulate in the Champions League, especially that tie against Barcelona. I mean, when I think of Unai Emre, no one should think Unai Emre Europa League winner. It should be Unai Emre that collapse against Barcelona in the Champions League. That just should never happen to any football club. I mean, Barcelona push it very close with the lead that they threw away, the Roma tie a couple of years ago, and obviously against... Liverpool last year, but PSG take it to a whole new level. But for me, Unai Emre, he's, he's not up to the standards. Will Mikel Arteta be? We'll just have to wait and see. But no, it was a uh, definitely watching it with the crowd noise is helps a hundred percent watching it. So yeah, uh, staying with football, uh, we've got the playoffs this evening in League Two. And, yeah, like I said in my last vlog, I think the right decision was made to finish the season now on a points points per game basis and then go straight into the playoffs for the teams that need to decide if they're going to go up. I think that was the right decision. I stick by that. It needed to happen. There's no doubt about it. Uh, so, yeah, for me, I can't see looking past Cheltenham. To going up in League 2. In League 1. Ooh. It should be Portsmouth. But. <laughs> that's easier said than done. Because it should have been Sunderland last year. So. Yeah we'll have to see about those ones. But no. Right decisions were made on that. From the Football League. So. Thumbs up on that. Uh, well, going back to the Premier League. Be an interesting one tomorrow. You know, when we've got Tottenham versus United, which will be, <laughs> that will be a blockbuster. Uh, you know, I know we don't have the fans and stuff like that at that incredible Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, but that is a huge game. Tottenham, where is their season going to finish? United, are they going to finish in the top four? If they don't, what happens with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? United obviously won the... The first game, 2-1 at Old Trafford. But no, it'll be interesting. I think Mourinho is at a really... He's at a crossroads in his career. I mean, people can say, oh, he's so decorated and stuff like that, but he hasn't won. I know he's not in the Champions League, so I'm not, not in the Champions League now, because obviously Tottenham got knocked out, but he hasn't won the Champions League since 2010, when he was with Inter Milan. And in that time, he's been with Real Madrid, who, to be honest with you, 
He was only employed by Real Madrid to win the Champions League and he failed at that. He went back to Chelsea, couldn't even get them to the final, couldn't get Real Madrid to the final also, but he went back to Chelsea, which I truly believe that the Chelsea squad he had was better than the Inter Milan squad he had, and obviously when he was at Real Madrid was better than the Inter Milan squad he had as well. And then, and then he went to United, and they were a mess in the Champions League, what, knocked out by Sevilla when he was there, because obviously he wasn't there when they were in the knockout stage of the Champions League in last season, when they got demolished by Barcelona. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it'll be interesting to see what happens if Mourinho doesn't get in the, in the top four. And what happens with United? It's, it's a big game. It could possibly be the game of this restart. If you know what I mean. Because both teams can't afford to lose. They're really like Whoever loses that is going to be in a bit of a, a mess. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. So yeah. And then we fast forward over the, the weekend. And obviously my team. Liverpool. Play Everton. Which will not decide the title, unfortunately, because that would have just been amazing. You know, you you picture it in your head like oh, we need to win at Goodison to win the league, where well, we can win the league there and then. And I was just thinking like going back to times when we've won there uh, late on Gary McAllister in two thousand and one, in the the treble season, uh, Sadio Mane twenty sixteen. Uh, no, it would have been great, but listen, we've had to wait thirty years. If we have to wait a couple more days, not a problem. Not a problem at all. We should be champions now. This pandemic's happened. So waiting a little bit longer, it's not a problem. And yeah, we take on Everton on Sunday, which is not guaranteed a win. I mean, our record at Goodison Park is not great. I mean, Klopp's only won there once. Uh, in 2016, uh, we seem to like to draw there a lot, uh, and yeah, I mean, we, we we like I said, we we went through a stage where we would win there every single season. I think we won there like we were well four years on the bounce. Then we kind of had a bit of a wobble where we lost two out of three, and then we started to win again. And it's just been a lot of draws, but. <laughs> We'll just have to see what happens. I mean, we've beaten them twice this season. To to get to do the treble over them would be unbelievable. Everton fans would be pulling their hair out. I mean, oh my word. Uh, so, but no, with that game, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two one. I'm gonna go two one, for the simple fact that the last time we played in the league, Allison did not play. Uh, which you know, I don't know what it is this season. We just we don't seem great. You know, keeping clean sheets has been a bit... It's not as been as easy this season as last season. So, yeah, I'm going to go 2-1. And I'm going to go Mane. And I'm going to go Salah. Yeah, 2-1. And then, obviously, we get, out, get three points on Sunday. And then it sets it up nicely for Wednesday. But one game at a time. One game at a time. So yeah, that's my view on the Premier League and football at the moment. Of uh, going over the pond into America, and yeah, so this talk with the NBA and a couple of not a couple of players, quite a lot of players, are worried about this bubble, and I totally understand where they're coming from. I mean, it must be really, it must be tough to kind of think that you are going to be stuck there, and like rules come in place that. When eight teams have been sent home, when the playoffs can start, then people can come and go, and all the the rules that have been set forward with that, which will be interesting. But yeah, I mean, for me, you need to finish. You need to finish the season. You, you need to finish it. Listen, NBA are no stranger to having shortened seasons. It's happened before, uh, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But for me, you've got to get it finished. You you have got to get it. You've got to get it finished. If you've started it, you've got to get it finished. You know, I mean, I don't know how they'll do it with rugby and rugby league in this country. 
luckily the cricket season hasn't started, so I don't know what they'll do with that. But with the NBA, the, the need to finish it. And for me, I don't, I don't, for me to see who wins it, I do truly believe it will be the Milwaukee Bucks. I do, I do think that, that this is going to be the season where Giannis is going to, is going to take that step because people are, criticize oh if he gets the mvp it's just the narrative and stuff like that well if he wins the championship you know it'll be worth it to say that the lakers are just guaranteed for it and no i'm not buying that at all i, I do think it will be the milwaukee bucks that are going to win it so that's my view on that but with regards to the bubble i totally understand why certain players are worrying and let's be totally honest you're asking all these athletes these basketball players for close to three months to be stuck in a resort <laughs> and literally all you're doing is playing basketball rest playing basketball rest playing basketball rest and not getting to be with your partners and i was hearing the podcast and they were talking about they basically went straight down to it you went you're asking these athletes sir who are in their early 20s to not, to not have sex with the partners for three months with all that testosterone building up. And it was a perfect point to bring up. And I truly do understand why it got brought up. I think it's a subject that hasn't been addressed. And it needs to be because, let's be totally honest, you know, if all, if you got all your Premier League players and went, right, you're all in a bubble, we're going to play all these games in one city, you can't have any fam... Then, it would, then you'd have to kind of just... Be mature about it and go, you're asking all these players, you know, and we all know what Olympic athletes have to do. You know, some of the some of the traditions that they go through of not having sex, but it is a very, very good point to bring up. But it'll be interesting. I do think the season will restart and get finished. And I'm going to go for the Milwaukee Bucks to win it. I really do. Uh who would have thought last year the Toronto Raptors would have won it? So for me, Milwaukee Bucks, yeah, that they're gonna they're gonna win it all. Um, and to finish off with a little bit of NFL, uh, President Trump has came out and said that yeah, he's eager to see Colin Kaepernick get signed up to a team. Well, for me, that's unbelievable to hear, uh, considering all the things that have happened over the last couple of years with the kneeling and the flag and the protests and and everything else but for me i really if he signs for a team which i've got no problem if he signs for anyone he cannot expect he's going to be the star he cannot expect after all those years of not playing i mean everyone's saying oh three years out blah 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 one year out of the nfl can buddy derail you I mean, Rob Gronk- Ron Gronkowski has not played for over a year. Yeah, he's going to Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and yeah, he's only going to be get used sometimes. But he's still going to be on the pl- he's still going to be on the field playing, and that's one year. And we're ask and Colin Kaepernick's got to go from not playing since the twenty sixteen season, and then playing the twenty twenty season. I for me. It'll be still amazing if he does, uh, but I do think he would have to go in as a second choice, especially if Cam Newton gets signed and he's, oh well, he has to be second choice because of injury. Well, Colin Kaepernick is second choice. There is no way in a million years that you can play Colin Kaepernick as your starting quarterback. If you get an injury, he comes in, great. We all know what he did when he was at San Francisco and Alex Cook got injured and, and everything else. So... Alex Smith, sorry, not Alex Cook, Alex Smith. So, uh, yeah, for me, I would love to see him go to, like, Jacksonville, Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, give the starting, give the starting quarterback role to Gardner Minshew, see how he does, which, to be honest with you, I don't think he'll do great. You know, I was at Wembley Stadium when they played against the Houston Texans last November. Yeah, that was that was all. Uh, I went to watch four games 
four games at Wembley, four NFL games, he was by far the worst quarterback I've seen. But I truly do believe you would have to make him as the starter. You give him a couple of games. If Jacksonville Jaguars, who are probably going to be awful this year and could go 0-16, a uh, couple of games in and then Kaepernick comes in. But apart from that, I, I don't know what other team he could go to. But he, he can't expect to be first choice. He has to come in and be an understudy and then... If an injury or someone has just been absolutely awful, then he steps in. So we will just have to see on that one. But yeah, uh, busy, busy, busy. Sport is slowly but surely coming back. But no, football is back. Happy days. And yeah, we will see what happens tonight with the League 2 playoffs. Uh, and yeah, the Premier League action over the next couple of days. But we will just have to see and we just have to enjoy it. I just cannot believe that football is back. It's just unbelievable. Absolutely. I just I want to keep saying it, but it's just unbelievable that football is back on the television. Uh, and yeah, being played in football stadiums. So yeah, all is good. But yeah, uh, but no, uh, like, subscribe, comment, guys, uh, would be very much appreciated. And I will see you again very soon. Goodbye.